Hello friends and greetings all the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to the foundation level certification. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are stepping into the chapter 3 of the set B of our foundation level examination and we are trying to check out some of more options to see how exactly we can cater the need of uh, the tips and tricks related to this because every single set brings you a different type of question and each question can have something really unique to remember or understand right from there. So let's get started. The very first question we are looking here is at question number 15. The question number 15 says which of the following is an example of a defect that can be found by static testing but not by dynamic testing. First important point to understand that the question is about the typical defects which we get by static testing whereas not by dynamic and second important thing if you remember the last topic of 3.1 in our syllabus we clearly described you the list of possible defects which can be easily found by static testing compared to that of dynamic. So it should be made simple and easy to understand and conclude with this particular answer very straightforward. Okay so let's look at the options quickly. Option A says lack of usability provided through the user interface. Remember user interface is something which is tested dynamically not statically. So it is nowhere possible for us to review an interaction of the system via user interface without running test cases. So it should be crucial for us to understand this is a dynamic testing defect in case uh, there's a lack of usability and this is conducted by executing usability tests not by conducting reviews. Again the defect is very important. The lack of usability can only be measured while interacting with the system. Okay, so B says uh, code with no path that reaches it, which is indirectly saying unreachable code. And you should remember the unreachable code is a part of static analysis, where static analysis is a type of static testing. Static testing is of two types reviews and uh, static analysis. Reviews, where you can read the document and find the defects. Static analysis is more for code where it is not easy for human to read and then find the defects. So we basically run a tool to identify the gaps. So that's something relevant to static testing. But let's cross check with C and D. C says uh, poor response time for most of the time, most of the expected user. Poor response time is directly related to performance testing and performance testing is a level of testing which is dynamically conducted, not reviewed. Okay, so code review is something which can contribute to performance testing, but performance testing is a dynamic test level and this defect that is response time is related to dynamic testing. Option D says uh, required features that are not implemented in the code. Remember one thing, static analysis also has a drawback or limitation that static analysis can only analyze the code which is written. But here this option is clearly saying that one which is not implemented in the code, then I can only measure it through. Uh, interfaces or any other way but not static testing correct so it's just that like it is not there the static testing cannot reach that part as far as it is not implemented so put together this is not the right answer so sometimes it is very straightforward to conclude what is something we can do by static testing what is something we can do by dynamic testing and then how exactly the defects can be identified so put together the right answer for this particular question is b that is code with no path that reaches it it reaches it is basically the unreachable code and yes static analysis can help us to identify such static defects but easily than that of dynamic testing in fact dynamic testing cannot find it because nothing takes you there it is there is no code written to reach that particular part of it so you can never reach it through dynamic testing so let's move on and we take the next question here the next question we have is question number 16 which says which of the following is a benefit of early and frequent stakeholder feedback now benefit of frequent and early feedback we discussed that we uh, share the updates and whatever implementations we do with the business to acknowledge in form of demonstrations in agile and we take a confirmation from them that are we aligned to the needs and expectation of the requirement because there's no point implementing something which does not meet the desired expectation of the customer or the end user. So we basically represent and take this frequent feedback again and again just to make sure that we are aligned to that of the requirements and actually creating what is required here. 
So I think making that very clearly and crisp to the point, let's go to the option. The option A clearly says here that managers are aware of which developers are less productive. Again, this is not the context, so it doesn't make any sense here because early and frequent feedback is never about developers or testers. It's more about aligning to that of the customer expectation. So A can be easily ruled out here. Whereas B, it allows uh, project managers to prioritize their stakeholder uh, interaction. Prioritizing their stakeholder interaction is one input that uh, what exactly we need to talk to the business at what point of time. But when it comes to early and frequent feedback as a context, whatever you have built has to be presented to the business and business should acknowledge that how much you have achieved it and how much uh, you are deviating from their expectations. So that should not be a constraint to be considered that what to be included. Option C says it facilitates early communication of potential quality issues. That pretty much makes sense, which is related to what is early and frequent feedback for. And if I go to option D, option D says uh, that end users better understand why the delivery of the work product is delayed. No, it's not particularly about the delay, right? It's not something very specific to that. Delays do happen in many projects, but it, early and frequent feedback is not to explain that why your project is getting delayed. It's more about acknowledging and helping the business understand that what we are implementing, how much we have implemented so far, is that in line with your requirement, okay? And that's the only goal of early and frequent feedback, just to make sure that the business understands and acknowledges we are doing is good, okay? And that basically makes us to succeed with our project and align our implementation to that of the business requirements. So put together, I think keeping it very straightforward, the right answer to this particular question is, C, it facilitates early communication of potential quality issues, which can be in form of user requirements or user stories or acceptance criteria. And by implementing them, we just raise a simple concern to the business that are we in line with your requirement or not? So put together, that's all what we had from this particular tutorial. We'll be getting back to uh, other two questions of the chapter three in the next tutorial. So that's it, that's from here today. So that's all from this particular tutorial. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.